this episode of Art Loft, Tengo Talento, a new generation of talent emerges in Cuba. Es importante que los padres luchen por los sueños de los niños, ya que cuando cogen una, una profesión que les gusta, no se le puede tronchar. Tienen que seguir a saber que si son aquí y si le gusta dejarlo. And Swan Song of the Skunk Ape, the mystery creature of the Everglades. Camps like this are a typical place where I'd look for a sign. Something actually caught this uh, mechanism and knocked it and broke it loose. It's all ahead on this episode of Art Loft. Funding for Art Loft was made possible by Friends of Art. Hi, I'm Lolo Reskin, and from the studios here at South Florida PBS, this is Art Loft. Welcome back, I'm Lolo Reskin. This week on Art Loft, we're joined by Diliana Alexander, Executive Director of Filmgate Miami, a powerhouse local organization that mentors and empowers local creators in a variety of media, film, digital media, interactive and immersive content, and more. It's so nice to have you with us, Diliana. Thanks for having me, it's lovely to be here. Tell us a little bit more about Filmgate and the kind of programs that you guys have to help local filmmakers. Sure. Filmgate Miami supports independent filmmakers uh, with uh, producing their in uh, interactive, immersive, or independent projects. Uh, we do that with a variety of programs. We have a monthly festival called I'm Not Gonna Move to LA, very tongue in cheek. Um, and uh, we screen local short films. Uh, we provide a platform for local filmmakers to present their work, and we invite a industry professionals to come in and meet the new talent that's emerging and hopefully give them a leg up in the industry as well. Um, and this is a great place to see what your project will look like before you send it to festivals. We convert the projects to DCP, the screen in O Cinema Winwood, which is a fantastic venue. Um, and it's a great way to gauge uh, the audience reaction. And then we have a really fun way to choose the winners of the night, the audience. It's very interactive, so the audience gets involved in uh, who wins the award each, uh, each month. That's awesome. So today we're going to show a couple of the documentaries that have come through your program. Uh, the first one we're going to take a look at is called Tingo Talento and tell us a little bit more about how that came to you. So Claudio was introduced to us as, a, as an import from uh, Havana. He was born in Havana, Cuba. And the project, it's a web series, so um, that's one of the, uh, one of the episodes. Um, and it's on a Cuban Afro dancer. Um, and uh, the, uh, he was introduced to us because he was looking for a home and a support network in Miami. And uh, Miami is a transient place. There are a lot of immigrants that come here and influence the culture, which is one of the reasons why I love the city so much. And uh, he, was, uh, he came to us and said, I'm a, I'm a Cuban filmmaker. I'm here to work. And uh, we provided him with the platform to screen the project at I'm Not Gonna Move to LA, the, the web series episode. And since then, he has found, um, founded a production company here. So it's really great to see the success that you can get from screening at NOLA. That's awesome. Well, we're going to take a look at Tango Talento. Enjoy. Yo soy muy feliz de poder llevar mi arte a todo el mundo, porque mediante el arte uno es capaz de expresar sentimientos, costumbres. Gloria a mi madre, bendición, aquí está Frida Chartera, ella pidiendo la bendición. 
Mi nombre es Yenice Lázara Galata Campo. Estamos en mi casa, una casa de gran prestigio religioso o casa santoral, como bien se conoce en Cuba. Y este es el cuarto de los santos. Y Chango, el dueño de toda la debilidad de los hombres, la sabrosura, el dueño del tambor. Su color es el rojo y el blanco. Es el oricha de la sabrosura. Bailarín por excelencia. Soy maestra de folclor, danza folclórica y además soy bailarina. Soy licenciada en arte danzario, con perfil en danza folclórica desde el 2005 y maestra desde el año 94. Entonces, aquí cerca te puedo llevar a una escuela que tú vas a ver grandes niños que tienen un talento enorme, a pesar de que no tienen un buen local donde ensayar ni ni en buenas condiciones, pero vas a ver qué corazón tienes para bailar. Son fenomenales. Verdaderamente, cuando tienes, cuando uno tiene un buen maestro que, que te llena, que, que, que te transmite ese amor y esa pasión por lo que hace, pues eso le llega a uno y verdaderamente después uno lo quiere compartir con otras personas. No, ya estoy llegando a la escuela. Sí, ya espero todo este cuadrado y con los muchachos. Esos grandes talentos que vamos a ir a ver, va a ser difícil escoger uno. Porque es muy impresionante. Ustedes mismos van a tener que ayudarme a escoger, porque si es por mí, los escojo a todos, porque sé que son muy buenos. Bueno, yo me llamo Natividad Calderón Fiallo. Me dedico a trabajar hace 15 años con niños. Tengo una experiencia bastante vivida. Los y entonces, todo el mundo esperando de aquí para ver qué pasa. Son fenomenales, son, tú los ves y yo digo, ahí están mis relevos, ahí están mis sucesores, ahí están los que van a dejar, los que no van a permitir que el, el afro y el folclor se vayan a este país. ¿Cómo se sienten? Bien. Bueno, ¿están preparados para este importante día? Sí. Entonces, ¿quién va a ser mi sucesor? A ver. Yo. ¿Pero todos van a ser mi sucesor? ¿Tú sí. también? Pues yo creo que lo más importante para ser mi sucesora es poner el corazón a la hora de bailar. Porque sin corazón no hay nada. Así pueden bailar muy bien, pero si no ponen el corazón para que llegue a mí y al público, no llegarán a ser mis sucesores. Pues llegó el momento más difícil del de día. Decidir. Pues no voy a decidir. Porque todos ustedes bailan muy bien. ¿Y tu mami? Ay, ¿qué? ¿Cómo está? Bien. Bueno, vengo a decirte que tu hija fue la seleccionada, así que ya tú sabes que pronto estamos en función 
Te voy a invitar. Lo primero que va a pasar es que mañana estás invitada al grupo de mi ensayo Sain del Monte. Ve lista con tu traje hermoso y lista para hacer una pequeña función conmigo. ¿Estás en tal? Sí. Y usted, ya usted sabe, me la llevo Bien. ahí, bonita, para que salga como debe ser todo. ¿No está contenta? ¿No está feliz? Claro. Ah. Yo la estaba firmando. No pude terminar de firmarla porque empecé a llorar. Eh, siguió firmando una compañera que estaba al lado mío, la siguió firmando porque no puede seguir firmándola. Y en un momento que ella me miró, porque dije, si me mira, y no me miró, siguió bailando y bailó bien. Bueno, que en todas las actividades bailó bien. que los padres luchen por los sueños de los niños, ya que la, cuando cogen una, una profesión que les gusta, no se le puede tronchar. Tienen que seguir hasta ver que si son aquí y si les gusta dejarlo. Yo pienso que, que los sueños, o sea, cuando uno cuando es niño y uno tiene un sueño, es el, es, lo, es el motor que te impulsa para tú seguir adelante y llegar a lograr el sueño. ¿Qué característica tiene hoy dentro de los orichas? ¿Es una oricha pasiva o una oricha guerrera? Guerrera. Ah, una oricha guerrera. Dentro del panteón Yoruba hoy ya está en el, en el ciclo de los orichas guerreros, donde está el guau, Gungo Chosi, también está hoy ya. Por su temperamento, que es fuerte, que semeja los movimientos del viento, todo eso que nosotros hacemos con los brazos, con las sayas, no es más que los estados anímicos del viento. Cuando hay una brisa suave, cuando hay una brisa muy fuerte, cuando hay un huracán, eso es lo que nosotros reflejamos con nuestro cuerpo. ayudarse a alguien para ayudar a su familia. Yenisei me dijo que siempre tengo que bailar con el corazón. We're here chatting with Diliana Alexander from Filmgate Miami about local filmmakers. Next up, we have Swan Song of the Skunk Ape. What makes this film so special? Right, so it is a Florida story. Um, Brad Abrahams is actually another immigrant director. He's from Canada, he's a fellow Canuck. Um, but he works here now and internationally as well. And this is a really fun Florida story because you only hear it here. And it's about the skunk ape who roams apparently in the Everglades. But the film is really about the different personalities that you can find in Florida and in the Everglades. And, um, and it's very human and it's uh, so relatable. So I think that's, uh, you get a really uh, nice, uh, treat uh, from hearing the story but also discovering this uh, really interesting characters and in the end 
Uh, maybe I should not say the end. No, don't ruin it for the audience. Yeah, I won't ruin did, it for the audience. But did this one go over great at a, I'm not going to move to LA? Oh, it went fantastically. And it's um, it's such a great, at the beginning it begins with um, an airboat, of course, taking you into the Everglades as a journey. And uh, you just can't help but fall in love with that that location. It's so unique and so special. And we are uh, really uh, so honored to have it here. And we should have definitely protect it. Absolutely. All right, everybody, enjoy Swan Song of the Skunk Ape. If I suddenly came upon one face to face going through a trail, I would begin to talk in a normal voice with the creature. The Indians say, Cheetah Tom O, how you doing? Maybe I'd do that, I don't know. It's their home. And if you ever encounter something of that nature, you need to give it its distance and leave it alone. There's a lot of alligators in there. When you fall in that water, they'll eat you. That's when they feed us at night time. That's all we did. We stayed in the woods all the time. When we weren't in school, we were in the woods. Summertime, anytime. This is where you'll find a lot of your cotton mouths, a lot of your poisonous snakes in here. But at night time, it's walking through these cypress don't light. It's pretty spooky through here. Well, these trees, if the sun hits it just right, but it can cast a shadow, and you might think you've seen something. And then what I saw was like this. He looked at me like that. First, most common bear. I'm thinking it's a bear in here feeding. And I got to looking, and it wasn't a bear at all. Camps like this are a typical place where I'd look for sign. Something actually caught this uh, mechanism and knocked it and broke it loose. For the last 41 years, I've been gathering information, listening to stories, out searching. And I'll cover 50, 60 miles of these swamp bottoms going from alligator hole to alligator hole. And on many occasions, I found skunk ape tracks leading into the entrance of the hole. Comes over here deeper, 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 deeper. And there's the cave right there. The skunk ape. Let it be said by me, most of the stories that you hear are just a crock. Do not believe it. I guess I've always had swamp water in my blood. I always liked the idea of being away from everybody. I do a more exotic and sultry type of photography, semi-nudes, nudes. She actually won Sarah Palin a look-alike contest. This one. And this one was taken on my wife's 62nd birthday, when she was 62. And I have to tell you, all the years I've been out here, it's the only time I ever felt just a little bit spooked. We're way south of Loop Road. You have to get to it with a swamp buggy. And I was walking along, and I came up on this thing, and it was a footprint, a human footprint. It was so big that with my boots on, I could put my foot inside it. But the one thing I do remember is that horrible smell. 
as worse than a skunk as just seem to be lingering in the air. The Miccosukee and Seminole people, the indigenous people here, we pay attention to the animals, the trees. We notice everything about the land. It was pretty much in the middle of the day, I saw um, something on the right side of the road come out of the bushes and then go across and I was looking. At first I thought, well, what's that person doing out? I had to stand there and look and ask myself, am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? It just looked like a very, very huge, hairy, hairy person. Just a gentle breeze coming from the east. I got a whiff of something that didn't belong 50 miles into the Everglades. I'm what you might call an adventurer. And I specialize in finding uh, lost or dead people in the uh, hinterlands. Walking along this trail, I saw that the creature walked across on the balls of his feet. Just looking at the size of one of these prints is enough to convince you that it wasn't some dude out there in the woods running barefoot. No one in the right mind would be walking through that area with all the venomous snakes and ways of getting yourself crippled. If I think about it even for a split second, there's images that I have burned into my memory. That kind of thing doesn't happen when you've had a bogus experience. I uh, parked the car, picked up my bag of groceries off the seat, stood up, and then I saw this thing in the shadows. My knees locked and couldn't move, and the animal you know, was obviously observing me. and realized I was looking at a Bigfoot. Of course, at that time, I didn't differentiate the Bigfoot creature from a swamp ape, but now I know the difference. He's uh, rather scrawny down here. He'll grow to no more than seven feet. The animal has to walk on wet ground frequently. And if you feel across these toes, you can tell that they're webbed. More than half of their life is spent in the tree. So they're natural climbers. So you get anything, even man-made, they would want to climb. Their hair is very, very fine. These ragged little edges here will tear out sometimes half a dozen or more. We have had them tested, uh, and the report inevitably comes back unknown species. My theory of it, I don't know. I haven't ever seen one. So, and I haven't never seen a track of one. I've never seen where one's been, you know? They'd have to show it to me to really to make me believe it. There's 700,000 acres here. You never see a black bear out here hardly. There's thousands of them. So how are you gonna see the Bigfoot tracks if he's trying to stay away from you just as much as the black bear? Some things out here in my lifetime are unexplainable unless you've ever seen them. For us, it's just a part of life. There's always some clown in the audience that uh, has a closed mind. I don't give a rat's behind what they think. I know. It's just a matter of fact to me. 
I just don't think that we know everything like we think we do. He exists, he roams our swampy wooded areas and will for a long time. That was great. Diliana, thanks so much for being here. Uh, what's the best way for people to stay in touch with the busy schedule of events that FilmGate puts on? Sure. Um, always a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. And uh, the best way is through our website, filmgate.miami. We actually have the .miami uh, domain. Um, and um, any of the social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook, you know, the, the usual. Bang. Yes. Awesome, thank you so much. You're most welcome. Thanks for joining us this week on Art Loft. Connect with us on social media at ArtLoftSFL and watch anytime on the PBS app by selecting WPBT2 as your local station. For Art Loft, I'm Lolo Reskin. See you next time. Funding for Artloft was made possible by Friends of Art.